You're watching Sri Lanka's number one sports app, www.thepopery.com and welcome to a very special segment, Black Knight Rugby World Cup Special. Black Knight, of course, a brand that encapsulates male grooming from head to toe, has joined us in the journey in bringing you Rugby World Cup like you haven't seen before. And uh, to start off uh, this chat and to chat about what is to be expected at uh, this Rugby World Cup 2023, is uh, joining me uh, is uh, Abdullah Yusuf. Abdullah, a warm welcome to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Mr. Darshan. Brilliant. Now, uh, the Rugby World Cup 2023 is just hours away. It's going to kick start in France. Uh, 20 teams will play across nine venues in 48 games to uh, try and win that ultimate title of becoming world champions. Abdullah, it's going to be a very interesting tournament because after a long, long time, before the start of the tournament, you can't simply pick out uh, an absolute favourite who might go ahead and win this one. Uh, that's right, Sudarshan. I think after a very long time, if not for the first time, I think uh, it's very clear that there, there's just not one or two contenders. I think there are at least four or five teams that could uh, spring a surprise. And we must not forget that there are other teams that who generally perform specially at World Cups as well, who we don't categorize in those four or five teams as well. So I think all in all, it's going to be a really exciting World Cup. It is bound to be a very, very exciting World Cup and everything is uh, centred around uh, France where all the teams are going to be making sure that they go the distance, that they try and put out everything that they possibly can to make sure that this tournament is a good one. Now, uh, talking about the teams and favourites, uh, Abdullah, we have, to, we have to speak about uh, the defending champions, South Africa. Uh, because as defending champions and also as one of those teams that have really put their uh, put put may champion their cause in this run up to this World Cup, South Africa has to be considered as one of those teams that can really defend their title and try and uh, emulate what New Zealand did in defending a rugby World Cup. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the, the thing about South Africa is they've just got that kind of game plan that suits World Cup rugby, especially knockout rugby. Uh, they play a very risk-free game. They use a lot of kicking, very strong defense, very strong uh, maul. And uh, those are the kind of ingredients where you play a very risk-free game that is ideally suited for the knockout phase of the tournament. Uh, so I think they're definitely up there with one of the favorites. But as we mentioned earlier, there are other teams that can definitely pose uh, problems to them as well. Yes, uh, while talking about the other teams, we can't tell not talk about the host country. France have been making waves. They, they had a very, very young set of uh, players in the past couple of seasons, but they have stuck to them. And uh, these players are slowly but surely maturing and the hope will be for all of the French supporters that they will come to their prime in their home World Cup. With the home advantage, with the home crown behind them, it's going to be very interesting to see how France front up in this World Cup. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing about the French uh, rugby is that they have been targeting this World Cup for a long time. It started about uh, six or seven years ago with their under-20 squads. And I think they won two consecutive under-20 World Cups as well. And now those players have evolved and now they have uh, gathered adequate experience uh, at international level. And uh, they're definitely looking at a team that is very cohesive, uh, very confident in their ability. And uh, I think with that crowd backing, they, they could definitely go all the way. When we talk about teams that are slight favourites or teams that can really make waves in the World Cup, if we don't chat, chat about the team that is currently ranked number one, I think a lot of people will find fault in us, Abdullah. Ireland, despite not having reached anything beyond the quarterfinals so far in World Cups, are looking like a team this time around that can maybe go the distance or else can really change uh, their history when it comes to World Cups. Yeah, absolutely. I think the build-up towards this World Cup from their point of view has been brilliant. They are the regaining Grand Slam champions of the Six Nations as well. Uh, they have looked a bit patchy in the lead-up to this tournament, but sometimes you sense that they tend to hold things back for the big occasion. Uh, but they will have to be on top form from the group stage itself because if you just look at the group, which they are in. Uh, they have South Africa, uh, they have uh, Scotland as well. 
Uh, so they'll have to be on the top of their game. They can't afford to hold anything back. Uh, but uh, as you very correctly said, Sudarshana, being the number one in the team, it does add a bit of pressure. But you just sense that this team has the adequate experience to handle that pressure in key moments. Well, um, if, if you were wondering uh, when we are going to come to the uh, most majority of Sri Lanka's favourite team, it, it is a testament on how competitive this World Cup is going to be. We, are not go we weren't talking about all backs first, we weren't talking about all backs second. They are falling on to the fourth uh, uh, place pre tournament, uh, Abdullah. That, is, that, is, that has been the general form of the all backs so far this, uh, this season and the past season as well. They haven't performed to what we know of. Uh, all Blacks, when it comes to their dominance, they haven't been that team. Everybody stands up and takes notice, but uh, it's all it's the All Blacks. You can go to the end of the world, and if there is a World Cup, All, all Blacks will be a favourite. So, how, there will be expectations on them, and what do you think uh, the All Blacks will be able to do? Yes, there's always expectations uh, with All Blacks. The only thing is, in, at this World Cup, uh, they are coming in not as outright favourites, like in the previous editions. So it will be interesting to see how they will adjust to that. Sometimes you could sense that uh, they'll, they'll feel a little bit more relaxed coming into that environment, but the expectations are definitely there. Uh, they definitely do have the players, they do have the depth as well, which is being tested even in this first game because there, they have a few injuries. Uh, but all in all, I think uh, that uh, they have planned reasonably well. They had a hiccup uh, in their last game against South Africa. But uh, I do think that uh, come knockout time, they will have prepared adequately well because after this first game against France, uh, they will have a few games where they can ease into that knockout phase. So how they uh, prepare for that, how they handle those games, how they rotate their players uh, will be crucial uh, when it comes to the knockout phase of the tournament as far as the All Blacks are concerned. Now, uh, we spoke about four teams that are really put in their hands up, but then there are two teams uh, that haven't really had the ideal run up to the World Cup. Uh, if, if it, I think it will be fair if I call it a somewhat disastrous run up to the World Cup. England and Australia, both World Cup winners, both teams with very, very rich rugby tradition, haven't had the ideal run up to the World Cup. Pretty much disastrous for England uh, with the past couple of uh, turnouts, their last game to the World Cup. They lost to Fiji for the first time in the history. Australia, on the other hand, have they sacked their coach, got Eddie Jones, who was from England. So both teams, see, uh, at the moment, in a similar uh, state of the land. Uh, they are they are not the very best, or they are not at the very best momentum going into this World Cup. Yeah, that's right. You have to say that both these teams are in a bit of turmoil, if I have to use uh, that terminology. Uh, but the thing for both those teams' advantage they have is they are on a slightly easier side of the draw. So if they can yet put in a few good performances, uh, make it to the quarterfinals, and then once you get into the semifinals, it's just a one-off game, and you don't know how the other teams in the other half of the draw, uh, what kind of physical and mental condition they will be coming in after at least a couple of very tough games. Uh, so it's interesting, but uh, it's hard to see those two teams uh, progressing beyond the semi-finals at the very least. Maybe one of them would make it to the semi-finals, uh, but uh, to go all the way, it looks extremely unlikely. So if you are a, a Wallaby fan or if you are a Red Roses fan, uh, Abdullah's prediction early in the tournament is not going to be, not going to sound very nice to you, but uh, I do tend to agree with Abdullah. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's very difficult for these two teams by the looks of how they have played, by the looks of how the team selections or the squad selections have been made and then the run-up to the tournament, it's, uh, it's looking very, very bleak. We'll have much more to chat about. What we'll do is we'll go for a quick commercial break and when we come back, we will have much more things to chat about of the, on this World Cup, on Black Knight Rugby World Cup special. <laughs> You're watching Black Knight Rugby World Cup special on thepopper.com. Black Knight, of course, a brand that encapsulates male grooming from head to toe, has partnered us in uh, taking you through this 
incredible journey of the Rugby World Cup across 58 days where 20 teams will be competing in 48 encounters across nine venues in France to be to have the bragging rights of uh, calling themselves world champions. Abdullah, we were chatting about the favourites, we were chatting about uh, who will have that extra possibility in going all the way. But uh, let's now talk about week one, the first round of games. Eight games are to be played across uh, two days, Saturday and Sunday for us Sri Lankans, for us rugby fans. All of you, I'm sure, are readying yourselves for early mornings because the first game itself is at 12.45 a.m. on Saturday. Um, it's going to be a blockbuster. It's going to be a thriller. It very well could have been a final, Abdullah, and it has been a final before as well. Um, and before we go any further, a quick reminder that all these games are going to be coming to you live on Dialog TV channel number 126. The Popery TV will showcase all these games and also you will be able if you are by chance on the go you'll be able to watch these on uh, the view app as well abdullah first game first up we'll take a look at the uh, week one fixtures as uh, we take a look at them on the screens very interesting games line up eight uh, games four games on the ninth four games on the tenth uh, ninth of course the big elephant in the room the big game France versus New Zealand um, and uh, on the 10th we have three very interesting games that's England versus Argentina, South Africa is taking on Scotland and also Wales taking on Fiji. Um, let's first chat about the first game. What an opener to have. Horse team taking on the All Blacks. When All Blacks plays any team it's a big one but here a lot is at stake. F the French World Cup journey, the French World Cup campaign might be uh, decided on this game. Yeah, I mean, it's a game that has been uh, looked forward to by everyone for a very long time, isn't it? And what a wonderful game to start the World Cup with. Uh, I think, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the French probably have more riding on this game than the All Blacks uh, because they definitely want to get a good win just to get the crowd behind them, isn't it? It's such a big uh, part of uh, this World Cup. Everyone has been looking forward to it. Uh, so the pressure will probably be slightly more on them than the All Blacks. Uh, and uh, also I think uh, the fact that uh, they would want to just try and get a little bit of momentum, a bit of confidence going into it, uh, is going to prove crucial. Uh, from the All Blacks point of view, I think they will be more concerned in just putting on a good performance. While the result will be important to a certain extent, I don't think it will be the be all and end all. Because if you just go to the last World Cup as well, uh, the first game of the tournament was between the All Blacks and South Africa and the All Blacks won it pretty convincingly but uh, it's the South Africans who went all the way. Uh, so the, how you time your run into these tournaments is also going to be crucial. Uh, yes, I think it's going to be a very good game uh, but uh, I'd probably have France as slight favourites going into the game. Also considering the fact that uh, the All Blacks are without three key players, I think uh, uh, Retallick, uh, Frizzell as well as uh, uh, Jordi Barrett, well, all three of them are injured. So uh, in that context, I'd have to probably say that the French are slight favourites going into this game. Now, uh, you, you put forward a very interesting fact that uh, the French might have uh, a slight advantage while the French also might have that slight bit more pressure because it's going to be played at Stade de France, the same uh, venue, the, the venue that will be hosting most of the games this World Cup. It will be hosting actually 10 games in this World Cup, including the final and the opening game. So Stade de France, we know when the games are played there, it's packed crowd. Uh, looking at uh, looking at the research, looking at the numbers that are coming in, 90% of the French population are very positive towards this World Cup. 61% say if they can get hold of a ticket, they will definitely go watch the game. So the French are going to be mad about this Rugby World Cup. So, and they are very, very passionate supporters as well. So how this French team performs in front of that packed stadium is going to be crucial to their uh, World Cup. Yeah, exactly. So that's why uh, this game is so important for them. They'll definitely need to get a win for them to just get that momentum and that same pressure probably doesn't apply to the All Blacks as much. Uh, so it's interesting to see how both these teams will approach the game. 
uh, one thing is both these teams like to play a similar brand of rugby. They like to spread the ball, like to play the game with a lot of flair. Uh, probably the French have a slight advantage up front uh, in terms of uh, the set piece. Uh, and also they have a very good line out as well. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how these styles uh, actually merge in this game and when they go up against each other, uh, who will just have that extra bit of confidence to execute under pressure. That's what it could come down to at the end of the day. You uh, mentioned an interesting fact, Abdullah. Now, when it comes to the physicality, especially with those three uh, players that you mentioned are missing out, uh, uh, Jordi Barrett and also Ritalik and um, uh, Shannon Frizzell, physicality is going to be a major factor because the French like to be physical. But uh, in, the fr in the French camp as well, we, we, we've, we've been seeing a lot of uh, the rugby players across all nations going down like flies before the tournament uh, to injury. French lost their number 12 as well. That is a massive loss to the French. How will the physicality come into this game? And which team do you think will have that slight edge? You did mention French might have that edge up front, but do you think uh, when it comes to the, the uh, if, if I'm to say, lasting the 80 minutes, do you think uh, All Blacks will have an edge or do you think the French will French physicality might uh, make, make a run for it? Yeah, I think the French probably have a slight advantage in the physicality. But it's interesting the selection of the All Blacks for this game as well. Because in their back row, they have gone with basically three number sevens. Yep. Uh, in Savea, who is originally a seven, then the skipper Sam Kane, uh, as well as uh, Papaleli. So they're all it's number seven. So it kind of indicates to a certain extent the kind of game that the All Blacks would like to play as well. Yeah. They would like to keep the game moving, probably run the French forwards much more to try and tie them out, to fatigue them. Uh, so uh, if they get into a kind of a slugfest or into a physical battle, I don't think that will be advantageous to the All Blacks. And the, and the selection kind of reflects that as well. Uh, so, uh, it'll be interesting to see the game plans that both teams adapt in this game and uh, uh, that could prove crucial in the final outcome as well. Well, talking about the final outcomes, I'm going to put you on the spot, Abdullah. You can answer to the camera directly focusing at you. Your prediction on the opening game, who will win and by how much? Well, I have to say the French. Uh, I probably the fact that uh, they have much more riding on this game. They will want to get a good win, as I said earlier, to just get that good feel-good factor, not for within the team as well, but the entire nation uh, getting behind them. Uh, I'd probably say the French by six points. Well, as an all black fan, I, I earnestly hope that Abdullah Yusuf is going to be wrong and uh, he'll have to punch his word come next week and um, hoping for an All Black win and I think All Blacks will go the distance by seven points. Let's see how that works out uh, and we'll move into the next game but uh, reminding you again the opening ceremony will kick off at 11.30 p.m. on Friday that is the 8th. That is today in a couple of hours you'll be able to try and witness the grand opening ceremony of Rugby World Cup 2023 on Dialogue TV channel 126 Papa TV and you'll be able to witness from the get-go and all the games coming to you live on uh, true HD quality on Papa channel. Uh, moving on to the 10th, uh, uh, a day where a lot of uh, the rugby fans are going to be busy in front of the TV we have three games lined up. First one, of course, England versus Argentina. This is a tricky one, Abdullah, especially given the fact that England haven't, be, haven't been performing very well. They are going to be sent their skipper uh, as well. Uh, Graham Ford has been uh, picked at number 10, no Andy Farrell because of, uh, because of his suspension. Argentina, on the other hand, have been on the up with how they performed in the rugby championship it's a team that can really push their case in the World Cup. Yeah, and I have to say that Argentina are going to this game as favourites. Uh, just the fact that uh, they have build, been building up a, a team for this tournament over the last couple of years. Uh, Michael Shaker has come and joined that setup and has taken over as head coach. And he's uh, seemed to have uh, got them going, got them much more disciplined. 
uh, in terms of their defense, not conceding as, much, as many penalties as they used to earlier. Uh, and also the fact that England, they've just been all over the place, isn't it? So uh, it's very hard to see England picking themselves up for this game, especially after the loss last week. Uh, so you'd have to say that Argentina go in as, uh, I'd say, comfortable favourites. Yes, Argentina can make sure that they start off uh, the Rugby World Cup with an impressive win against England. And all, all, always, when you beat England, it's going to be brilliant um, for any nation, especially the Southern Hemisphere teams, fancy beating England in the Northern Hemisphere. And Argentina are really in with a chance. The next game we are trying to take a look at is going to be South Africa versus Scotland. This is a group which is uh, very highly contested. We spoke about how important South Africa's start is going to be, but Scots are also coming in with a very good run-up to the World Cup. And uh, they do have the capability to really unruffle that risk-free rugby South Africa would like to play. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the key part of this game is going to be the fact whether they'll be able to compete with South Africa up front. Uh, if they can get consistent amount of ball to their backs, uh, Finn Russell has been absolutely brilliant in that number 10 position when he's got good go-forward ball. So if they can get some good front football for him to get those backs going, they can definitely cause problems. But just that ability to do that and compete with those South African forwards, that's going to be the critical factor to see whether South Africa can actually come on top of this in this game. So fair to say that South Africa might go into this game as comfortable favourites. Yeah, you'd have to say so. It's hard to see an upset on the card, just the way South Africa approach this game, especially that performance against the All Blacks uh, last week. I mean, how they physically just dominated that pack. Uh, the, South, uh, the Scottish forwards are going to have their work cut out. If they can get some form of parity up front, then they will be in with a chance. But if not, it's uh, going to be very tough. Yes, uh, that is going to be a tough one for Scotland, like Abdullah mentioned. But uh, nevertheless, it's going to be a game to watch out for. Well, I hope you are feeling the heat as well as we are, because the World Cup is just a couple of hours away. And uh, we are absolutely excited here at thepopper.com to be uh, embarking on this journey with you. Of course, with the partnership of uh, Black Knight, uh, a, a brand that really looks into male grooming. We are going to be bringing you fixtures, results and also uh, these chats every week to make sure that you are on point, that you haven't missed anything about rugby. And also you can watch the entire World Cup on Dialogue TV channel number 1, 2, 6, the property TV and make sure that you not miss anything. Abdullah, just before we conclude, I'm going to put you on the spot. Who is your favourite? at this World Cup, who is your favourite team at this World Cup and who do you think will be champions on, uh, in October at Rugby World Cup 2023? Well, it's a very tough uh, prediction to make at this stage, Sudarshana, but if I'd have to say, I'd probably say the All Blacks uh, because I think they'll probably uh, plan their, uh, they'll probably manage their a progression through the uh, group stage into the knockouts. Uh, and I think once they get their big players like Frizzell and Ritalik back, you could probably see them being an entirely different outfit. Uh, so the key for them is uh, just to keep their key players injury free. And if they can do that, I think they have got uh, the players and the skill and also the temperament to go all the way. Brilliant. And um, before, uh, I think you dodged this question. Who is your favourite at the World Cup? Our favourite team? Oh, well, I'd like to see Fiji at least make a semi-final. I think that would be great for World Rugby. Uh, because, I mean, they've just brought so much to the Sevens game. And if they can just transfer some of that form into the 15s game, I think overall it'll just do so much for World Rugby just to have a Tier 2 nation getting into a semi-final. Mm -hmm. uh, so I definitely uh, will be backing the Fiji outfit to... Uh, go as far as the semi-finals and once they get into the semi-finals with their kind of rugby they play, you never know. Yes, absolutely. So, very, very interesting games to come up. The next 50 uh, plus days are going to be amazingly wonderful if you are a rugby fan. Even if you are not, 
when World Cups come around every four years, whether it be cricket, rugby or football, you got to make sure that you are part of it, you are part of the conversation. So what we are going to do is we are going to make sure that you are included as well and we will bring you all the action that you need to make sure that you are updated about on Sri Lanka's number one sports hub. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you, Abdullah. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us and uh, we hope that we will have you next week as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much, sir. Well, with that, we come to the end of the first installment of Black Knight Rugby World Cup Special. Do join us on Sri Lanka's number one sports app, thepapare.com, on Dialogue TV to make sure that you catch the action and also visit Sri Lanka's number one sports app, www.thepapare.com to catch up on everything that is rugby. Until next time, I'm Sudarshan Aperis.